Nichols Pack, Benos Habad, Denver, Colorado, is our next reader. I was asked to speak about Benos Chabad, literally meaning the daughters of Chabad, referring to those girls who are affiliated with and educated within the Chabad movement. In yesterday's part, shall we read the story of two sisters, Rachel and Leah. Their father and mother schemed to have Leah marry Yaakov instead of Rachel. In an extremely quiet yet dramatic way, with an act of pure self-sacrifice, Rachel whispered a secret to her sister. Through the teachings of our Rebbe, these bit selfless, these selfless values, these, these these values of selflessness and giving are embedded into the hearts and minds of every girl in Chabad. These girls view every Jewish woman alive today as their sister, and they are dedicated to whispering the secret, the secret of inherent worth, value, potential, dignity, and hope to everyone they come in contact with. In addition to studying all aspects of Torah and Chassidah, these girls spend their time visiting hospitals or studying children with special needs, running holiday awareness programs, teaching in Hebrew schools, and acting as leaders in youth programs and summer camps. It is therefore natural and no surprise that many of these girls grow to hold influential leadership positions or selfless in their own communities. Their whispers create a hum that manifests in the energy and atmosphere that the girls of Chabad carry with them wherever they go. As a representative of the National Council of Rishay Ubinos Chabad, it is an honor and privilege to address this most distinguished audience delegates of the 47th Winter Convention of the Shevinos Chabad in Boulder, Colorado. I would like to acknowledge the presence of my dear mother, Mrs. Miriam Popak, who was given the task of organizing these conventions by the Lubavitcher Rebbe 47 years ago. For a woman was instrumental in bringing about the miracle. One of the things that Hanukkah teaches us, as underscored in the prayer of the al is that a Jew is never discouraged by the fact that Jews may be, appear to be weak and few physically while they are fighting, while, while they are facing the mighty and many. On the contrary, in as much as Jews are pure and tzaddikim and dedicated to your Torah, they have the power to overcome all obstacles. We like the Hanukkah menorah as a remembrance of the menorah which was lit in the Beit HaMikdash, in the Holy Temple. In the Beit HaMikdash, the same number of lights were kindled each day. In the Beit HaMikdash, the menorah was lit when it was light outside. We kindle the Hanukkah menorah once darkness descends. In the Beit HaMikdash, the menorah was lit indoors. We light the Hanukkah menorah in the doorway, facing the outdoors. And lastly, the menorah in the Beit HaMikdash was lit in the best of times, in the times of King Solomon, when there was peace and plenty for all. During the times of Hanukkah, it was a time of war and hardship. In today's day and age, it is not sufficient to behave in the manner that was appropriate when the Holy Temple stood in the best of times. Now we are in a situation where we have to constantly increase the light. We may start out small with but one candle, but we know that by tomorrow we will increase the light. We cannot be satisfied to illuminate only within our own homes. The street is dark. We must illuminate the world, no matter how great the effort and self-sacrifice. The message of the Hanukkah lights is clear. In all matters of Torah, especially in our present time, it is necessary to spread the light in a growing measure. I would like to acknowledge the Nashim Tzitkanios. I asked Hani, Hani, is there anything special that I should pray for for the convention? She said three things. First of all, let this be a true Hakel gathering, a gathering of unity of Jewish women. Secondly, I pray that this convention should inspire and affect all the women who come to participate. And third, please Hashem, let the weather be good. First of all, Khan Hamak in the There is a place to thank. I would like to say thank you to my dear friend Hani for calling incredible Hakel of women. And thank you to Hani and Rabbi Shaira for hosting this fantastic convention in Boulder. One summer, this was about a week before we were about to leave to camp, 
the Rebbe spoke about the urgency and the importance of the education of Jewish children. And the Rebbe's voice broke as he said, Toys and the Kinder, from space and nicht a filo and out of things. There are thousands of Jewish children who don't even know an Aleph base. The Aleph base of Yiddish faith, Aleph base of being a Jew. For those who didn't have the chance, through no fault of their own, to receive a true Jewish education, to receive what was truly theirs, their precious and holy heritage, the birthright of their soul. And so as for the sake of Ritzky and Gabi Holtzberg, and answer us for the sake of Maishala, who is waiting for Ima, for his mother. Answer us for the sake of all the precious Jewish women who have gathered here at this convention, who want nothing more than to serve you with all of their hearts. All the conversations of this weekend have been about one thing, how to come closer to Hashem, to strengthen oneself as a Jew in the schus of all the Nashim Sitkanias at this time, in Rifki among them. Abisha, please bring Mashiach now. Ad Masai, please join me in asking Hashem with all of our hearts to bring Mashiach now. Ad Masai, Ad Masai, Ad Masai. May we dance out of Golos with a simcha that will break down all barriers. Amal kenu barishenu b'karmamash.